I would submit to you as members of the media, this case has disturbed you like it's disturbed all of us for the reasons I think I articulated. It could have been you, it could have been your child, it could have been any one of us on any day driving along the freeways of Southern California. We've got to do better, and we will. God bless Aiden. God bless that little boy, and may he rest in peace. Big day for law enforcement in Southern California, uh, in Orange County. Uh, finally, uh, some sense of, okay, we figured out who is responsible uh, for shooting and killing this six-year-old boy. Aiden Leos is his name. Uh, it was a road rage case. I mean, just driving down a highway in Southern California, and apparently there was some sort of a lane change, and it turned into road rage, and, and results in a little guy losing his life. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It took a month to track him down, uh, but investigators believe they have found who is responsible. Here's the district attorney, Todd Spitzer. Today I am charging Marcus Anthony Ariz with a violation of Penal Code Section 187, murder with the enhancement of, of the penalty of discharging a firearm causing death. The punishment for this crime is life in prison. I am also charging Marcus Anthony Arise with a violation of Penal Code Section 246. That is discharging a firearm into an occupied motor vehicle with the discharge of a firearm as an enhancement. And the punishment for that crime is life in prison. I am charging Winnie Lee with Penal Code Section 32, which is accessory after the fact, with willfully harboring, concealing, and aiding Marcus Ariz with the intent that Marcus Ariz might avoid and escape detection and avoid and escape arrest, trial, conviction, and punishment for murder. Miss Lee is also being charged with knowingly concealing a firearm in her personal vehicle, which is a misdemeanor. Still with us, Judge Gino Brogdon. Judge, um, you know, you have people inside the courtroom all the time, so you meet all types, right? And, and what is wrong with people? How do we go from someone, all right, maybe someone cut me off, someone did something in a lane change, in, in a highway. How do we go from that? to we're, we're, we're firing a weapon and we're shooting a six-year-old boy? Well, you know, we're living in a, a pretty gun-heavy society. Whichever side of the fence that you stand on, uh, on Second Amendment stuff, the reality is, is that we've got more guns than we can control. And people are on edge. I'm telling you, it's the crazy driver, the road rage with a gun is a perfect combination for this kind of thing to happen. People need to be careful, get out of folks' ways, assume that folks have a weapon and that this is their worst day. So that if you get into a traffic battle with someone, back off because the price is too heavy. And that's how you see an innocent little boy being murdered on the street. And it's over nothing. I mean, it's nothing. It's over absolutely zero, zippo. What, what? T to me, you know, something happens sometimes to people when they get behind the wheel of a car. They, they, they completely change personalities. I don't know how it happens, why it happens, but it does. We're all uh, a little bit guilty of it. But, um, you know, from sure. covering these stories, though, I, I have come to realize that someone does something, I just slow down and let them drift ahead of me and just stay away because, you know, they're going to give you the finger. I mean, come on, I'm... I'm I'm coming up to a roundabout in my little town, a roundabout, and I know the rules of the roundabout. i got to wait to see if this car is going to go behind me, wah, 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 giving me the finger, and I, I just got to drive on. Can't do anything, Judge. You can't, you can't respond to it because you don't know what else that person is going to do. That's right, Vinny. The, the recipe for driving, at least, I used to be an angry driver, okay, and uh I had to cut that out because it was going to lead to a situation like this. And there are a lot of angry people out there. Folks are stressed. They're in a hurry. They've got things going on. And then some have a gun. 
the recipe for any driver who wants to be safe is assume that other people are crazy, assume that they may be armed, and do not take anything personal that folks do on the road. Because if you respond, you may be dealing with someone who's on their worst day with a lot less to, to lose than you have. And that's how this very tragic situation came about. I'm so sorry for this family. Yeah. Now, it took uh, law enforcement. They worked hard, uh, you know, around the clock. California Highway Patrol worked in this case. Um, took about a month. But there was a huge reward, half a million dollars. And that issue came up today at the, at the press conference. Let's take a listen. So when it comes to rewards, we get all the reports. We look at all the participation. We determine who did what and what percentage of their activity contributed, essentially, before making any determination. In addition, the rewards contingent upon not just an arrest, but a conviction. So it's incredibly premature to have this conversation. And number two, um, we haven't begun to do that analysis because we've been so focused on th this process. So the answer is, I, based upon what uh, Chief Goodbrand said yesterday, you learned yesterday at the CHP, it was a as a result of information through a tip that assisted in this arrest. So I'm, I'm putting on the record, there, there will certainly be an argument for reward money. There'll be an argument for reward money? Uh why is he saying that publicly like that? I mean, it, the, the purpose of all these rewards is to encourage people to come forward, right? And now we're kind of hedging a little bit? Was, I mean... Well, part of the problem, Vinny, is that people are going to be making their claims uh, that their evidence was more valuable or more helpful or that for some reason they're more deserving of the money. And that's why I think the prosecutor is trying to, uh, to quell this uh, race to the money. Uh, because you can't be handing out anything if you don't have a conviction. But money motivates people, and it's very smart to have a reward. But you get in this situation that once the killer or, a, or alleged killer is caught, uh, then folks say, well, where's my money? Uh, folks are going to have to wait on this one because they need a conviction first before they start handing out checks. Yeah, I, I just would have done it and said the, the, the reward money was a great incentive uh, information was received. We're going to go through it all, and and we'll take care of it, right? And then leave it. Just leave it there because it happened and on on all the. <laughs> you are a better prosecutor, Vinny. Yeah, because I want to encourage the next person to call as well. Okay. Finally, um, the DA also talked about, um, you know, what, what are we looking for here? What what type of sentence? You know, what what's going to happen to these defendants? Um, do they deserve any level of mitigation or sympathy? Uh, I think he spoke pretty clearly. Take a listen. If you came forward and turned yourself in, that that is considered a potentially mitigating factor in the big picture, that you took responsibility and that you wanted to turn yourself in and take responsibility, in contrast to creating a manhunt. We went on a manhunt. Yes, the duration in the grand scheme of things was relatively short, a couple weeks, but we didn't know what the outcome was going to be. And you heard from the chief that the arrest was quick based upon enough information to have probable cause to arrest at that time. But the point being is that this could have gone on for much longer. I put that out early on to make it very clear that my office would consider that as a potential factor in mitigation when we discussed what the potential sentence might be or the consequences. But they did not take me up on that offer. And at this point, quite frankly, I have absolutely no empathy or sympathy whatsoever. And this is a big factor, right? If, if, uh, if someone commits a crime but they take responsibility for it, turn themselves in, confess, admit, plead guilty, you get the benefit of that at sentencing. This defendant, if he's convicted, getting no benefit of that. Absolutely. These folks could have turned themselves in. And because they made the prosecutor and the police work hard to find them, that's going to be held against them. That's evidence. And, uh, you know, this is not unlike any other case where if the defendant cooperates and makes it easier, then there may be some leniency. But here they made it more difficult. And the case is very simple. 
that is, this young man shot into another car and and his girlfriend or, or uh, uh, other person in the car took him away and, and at least based on what the DA said, attempted to conceal him. That's not a hard case. If it was a difficult case, the DA would be looking for ways to uh, negotiate a plea such as to avoid a, a, a difficult conviction. Here, this case is very simple. So negotiating a plea is not likely, and they're not motivated to negotiate a plea given how uh, this guy was on the run and his girlfriend hit him. Absolutely. Judge Gino Brogdon, always great to have you on the program. Thanks so much for helping us out tonight. Good to see you, tonight. Vinny. All right, have yes, a great sir. night.